Oh, there's risk, but the reward is a reborn city. The little city of Oneonta in upstate New York is saying no to the demographic shift. We aim to reverse the trend line to bring 1,000 new neighbors into our city, to energize our historic downtown, to recapture the magic of the last century when Oneonta was a place to make memories and launch dreams. 1,000 new neighbors joining our community and adding to our quality of life. To bring them here, we'll take a blitz of promotion and connection, and we'll take the efforts of hundreds of us working together. But if we pull this off, we'll all win. This is the Hill City Gambit. I'm the mayor, Mark Drenick, and we've got a story to tell. Thank you for listening. If you would like to learn more and support Oneonta in our efforts in bringing a thousand new residents to our little city, visit exploreoneonta.com. That's exploreoneonta.com. I'm not sure. I don't have any knowledge as to like how to fix the problem. I'm just really good at identifying the problem. Um, I do know from like a homeowner's perspective, like because obviously when you reach a level or an age in your life, you like really want to own your own home. It seems easier because like when you're paying rent, you're paying that money and none of it counts for you. You know, I'd rather pay a mortgage. I'd rather spend the same amount and have it count towards me and my credit and my future. Um, and a lot of people um, will will buy a home and they find it more profitable to either use it as student housing or an Airbnb or for traveling nurses or whatever. It's kind of, it feels like it's more about the income and I do understand, but I think in terms of like the people that you want working in town or the people that like keep this town running and the people that operate this town and the people who have lived here and love this town so much seem to be in my eyes the people who struggle the most and have a harder time making it and that's really sad. So jumping right in, the expansion of our available housing is the priority. And Oneonta, like so many other cities big and small in the state, especially upstate, Oneonta does not have enough housing for our needs. And we plan to put further stress on this situation by actively recruiting new population, young families and singles and couples. And they will certainly have needs and they'll have expectations of their new home in the city and we are not prepared to meet those needs currently. It is difficult to find a place in the city, and although our neighborhoods are filled with lovely little houses, some simple, some significant, most were built in the heyday of Oneonta, and so they have some age on them. And they're not the sprawling, open-concept interiors that are popular. They're laid out with small rooms and quirky corners. I love them, but, you know, <laughs> that's me. And beyond that, many are currently the property of local and absentee landlords who've specialized in off-campus student housing. I think I mentioned we're home to two colleges, the State University at Oneonta and Hartwick College. And between them, about 7,000 students. We are proudly a college town. But as you may know, colleges throughout the region are grappling with the same demographic challenges as are the municipalities. And in their case, though, there is a clear and impending enrollment cliff of scary and consequential proportion. It's a long fall down that enrollment cliff and a longer fall for some. And we've just begun it. It's specifically tied to regional exodus, low birth rates, pandemic-inspired distance learning options, and the escalation of tuition costs. And it's a complicated economy out there that's also lowered its bar for certain levels of the workforce. And so that's a lot. What I am so happy to report is that two of Oneonta's recently arrived new residents, Dr. Alberto Cardelli and Darren Riesberg, are the presidents of SUNY Oneonta and Hartwick College, respectively, and they are both more than up to the challenge. They've got some solid strategies, which I will share on another podcast. But the silver lining to this period we're in is that our student housing market will be going through a contraction in its business model. It's a paradigm shift for those landlords that are paying attention. 
It's not all of them. And I can tell you, it's those folks' honest communications with the colleges and with one another that are informing some pretty good decision-making. They will do well, or at least they will do better than those who are not strategic, those folks that aren't paying attention. And it will benefit the city greatly. This is Jared Goss, a housing commissioner, and the liaison to the rental housing work group. When I spoke with him yesterday, he was just preparing for his work group's first ever meeting. Thank you for listening. If you would like to learn more and support Oneonta in our efforts in bringing a thousand new residents to our little city, visit us at exploreoneonta.com. That's exploreoneonta.com. So this group that's meeting this evening is one of seven work groups that the Housing Commission has broken down to. Each one of these work groups has a liaison member on the Housing Commission, but each one is trying to tackle different issues that the city faces around its housing market in different ways. So you want to talk a little bit about what you're hoping to achieve with the rental housing group? Sure. I think our initial, my initial goal uh, is sort of same page mentality. Um, it's very easy for people to operate in their own little bubbles, uh, whether we realize it or not. Um, and my goal is to educate people around, uh, you know, incoming uh, realities. And in fact, realities that have already arrived. Um, you know, the student housing market, for instance, uh, is quite down and it will continue to be down. Um, and it's going, the, the there's an impending enrollment cliff is what they call it. Um, and the Northeast is probably going to get hit uh, disproportionately hard compared to other areas. Um, and it's important for local landlords to know about that. And of course, there's a whole uh, sort of handshake with non-landlords about uh, what this means for our neighborhoods and our, our communities. So the idea is to educate so people can hopefully have an off-ramp some degree, which I think is your term that you taught me, which I, I very much like, um, you know, because the the market as it is, is not going to be viable. Um, and people should be aware of that. Um, and but there's other opportunities that could crop up surrounding that. Uh, namely, you know, everyone always complains that we have a, a housing shortage, which we do. Um, so we could put more locals um uh, in some of these these buildings, because more than fifty percent of the buildings in Oneonta in, in the city are rentals, typically to students. So, um, yeah, it's it's a pretty severe paradigm shift, but it opens up some opportunities. So that's what we're hoping to uh, get everyone on board with. And you have a a unique position. Not only are you the chair of this rentals work group within the housing commission, but you're also the general manager of Hillside Commons. Is it 133 apartments that you have for students? 117 apartments uh, and 330 bedrooms. 330 bedrooms. So your model at Hillside Commons is all about those nine months of student rental. And of course, the the economic impact of the enrollment cliff uh, isn't lost on you or the folks um, in the upper levels of management and ownership at Hillside Commons. Correct. Uh, as a matter of fact, tomorrow I have every Tuesday I have a meeting with ownership about uh, how things are going. And, um, you know, it's every nobody is I mean, I have a I'm not going to show it in any detail, but I have some comps of uh, uh, you know other landlords here. Nobody's doing spectacularly. Uh, and of course, the question is, why? What do we do about it? So, um, like I said, there's there's immediate hardship, but impending opportunity as well, hopefully. If we can get all on the same page, we can all uh, hopefully get along together. And that really is the key. So we call this podcast the Hill City Gambit. And, and the gambit is that as we're trying to bring a thousand people into this community, we're going to actually have housing for them when they get here. So the silver lining to the dark cloud for the business strategies of folks that have been in the business, some of them as many as 50 years on the student landlord side of things is that that paradigm, in fact, has shifted, will shift. It's not likely to be returning uh, in the near future. So we're looking at at least a dynamic of the next eight or 10 or more years where we're looking at a, a smaller number of off-campus student rentals 
And therefore, uh, if we are able to take advantage of this and we can shift that thinking for the folks that are student landlords, we're likely to see an opportunity for folks who we are trying to recruit to come into the community to find themselves a place where they might be able to live. And the city's housing is actually, a lot of it is um, quite nice to look at. In fact, you're an owner of a student house yourself. Yes. Uh, And I've already started to hybridize. I have students downstairs. I got locals upstairs. There is a market, I know at this meeting that you'll have tonight, I know you've got three human resources professionals that are invited. Hopefully, some or all three of them will wind up in attendance. And and that's as likely as anything else to be educating to the folks that may understandably be a little bit skeptical about the numbers and the projections and the possibility that there, in fact, is a market ready to take the place of the market that they're going to be losing. Yeah, and I think there's also uh, an adjustment, a mental adjustment that uh, needs to happen. You know, this isn't necessarily a catastrophe as it's going to be seen. It's an adjustment, but it's just like anywhere else. And we've enjoyed a very long, you know, booming student rental market. And it hasn't collapsed, you know, <laughs> we t- but if we get in front of it now, everyone's going to be just fine. That's that's the real goal here is to make, make people think that, you know, this isn't doom and gloom and catastrophe. This is just really kind of market correction in a lot of ways. But, you know, we'll see if we can uh, get that point across because it's difficult. So you have this meeting in about an hour and uh, 20 minutes per my clock right here. Do you have any idea of what you're hoping for, what you might be expecting in this meeting, your first meeting of this group? Honestly, I'm hoping that once some certain pieces of information are shared, i.e. the enrollment cliff, um, I'm kind of hoping there's a big silence and like, uh, you know, I'm kind of hoping there's this moment of like, oh, I didn't know that. And an awkward pause, because that's the opportunity to insert the education, you know. You know, I'm I'm hoping we don't have a lot of people coming in with that information, thinking that um, there's some strategy to get around it or to reverse it, because the, it that is just not there. You know, if uh, Warren Buffett were uh, investing in in the student rental market, uh, he wouldn't do it in Oneonta. It's just you just wouldn't. You know, it's this is investment 101 is what I'm trying to say. So we have to kind of unlearn some some things and. So I'm hoping to get on the same page in order to hopefully have some sort of idea coalesce moving forward. And that he did. Jared had his meeting last night, and I hung out for a chunk of it, although I know my role as a mayor who's looking to empower creative problem solving is to back off and let the dialogue flow unhindered by my presence or expectations. But what I can tell you is that the meeting was a success by any measurement. You had all sides at the table, student landlords and long-term lessors and human resources, community members, even a couple of economics majors from Hartwick College. And they have already begun strategizing how they can best match up with the coming needs and how those single-family homes and their inventories might be best made connective to the market. Oneonta's housing issues are complicated, no doubt. Student housing is just one component, though. But people working together for a common goal? That's the secret sauce. It's what we do here in Oneonta, and it gives me confidence. Will we convince 1,000 people to join us here? And will we have the housing for them when they arrive? Tune in. We'll find out together. This is the Hill City Gambit. I actually have to live out of town because there is no affordable housing for me in town. Um, It's actually really super inconvenient because now I have to pay the mileage to come into town. I have to pay the gas to come all the way into town. And um, it's, it's just not ideal, but it works for now. Hello, I'm Carrie Harrington. Thanks for your time and for learning all about our city. Special thanks to the citizens of Oneonta and all who have made the Hill City Gambit possible. We hope to see you again for our next episode of the Hill City Gambit. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening. If you would like to learn more and support Oneonta and our efforts in bringing a thousand new residents to our historic city, visit exploreoneonta.com. That's exploreoneonta.com. Woo-hoo. That was good.